And here come the handicappers. Now that Governor Christie's officially announced he's running for president, we're calling in the strategists. I'm joined here at the anchor desk by Bridget Harrison, political science professor at Montclair State University, Democratic strategist Vin Gopal, and Republican strategist Jeanette Hoffman. Jeanette, let's start with you. Governor Christie goes into this race as an underdog. Definitely. What's the path he has to take? Well, I think first, in his announcement, he did what he needed to do today and played to his strengths. It was a vintage Chris Christie speech. He was a reformer, telling like it is, you know, talking about the hard truths in politics. Um, but he is the underdog. He's certainly not the front runner here. There's a candidate of up, uh, field of up to about 16 candidates. 14 and announced. 14 announced, right. He's the 14th. And what Governor Christie needs to do is really distinguish himself from that huge pack of candidates with Republican governors and senators. So I think this message is one step in that strategy. Um, campaigning in New Hampshire, Governor Christie is an excellent retail politician who will go door to door. He will hold town hall meetings and will compete in those precincts. But one of the biggest challenges he's going to have is raising money to right. get his message out with such a big field. And establishment candidates such as Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio are already raising millions of dollars right now. So that's one of his biggest challenges. But I think starting in New Hampshire, you're going to see the vintage Chris Christie retail campaigning. Vin, what are the Democrats watching for in the Christie campaign now? Uh, his ability to probably connect with independent voters, how they, how he does in some of these early states, uh, especially in those states where they can cross over and vote in the Republican primary, uh, how he does not just with the conservative Republicans, but the moderate Republicans that make up some of these electorates like New Hampshire. Uh, I think those are going to be some interesting uh, tell signs that on how he does in the general election if he is successful uh, in the primary. Bridget, give, give us a more global outlook on all of this. He walks into a, a landscape that's changed radically by Bridgegate, by um, his standing in the polls, uh, by the, our, the state's economy, which is lagged behind the rest of the country and recovering from the recession. What does he have to do? Well, I think, Mary Alice, he has some very, very key strengths. Jeanette was talking about his ability as a retail politician. He has that ability, perhaps, um, unlike many other candidates out there, to really hit home runs with voters. The difficulty is that his opponents really have a lot of fodder that they can use against him. They can use the Bridgegate scandal. They can use the state's economic prospects. And I think that they will do that in very, very nasty ways. What we've seen from this governor is that when he is painted into a corner, he lashes out. And so one challenge for him moving forward is to be able to control that temper because it is going to get ugly, it is going to get nasty, and everything will be fair game. And he said just yeah. the other day at his press conference and signing the budget that he was tired. He stopped doing town homes because yeah. he was tired. When he gets tired, he gets angry. What's he going to do about well, that? Well, I think in politics, your strengths are your weaknesses, and your weaknesses are your strengths. So Governor uh, Christie's strong personality has, you know, both, it cuts both ways. And I think conservatives like that no-nonsense approach, um, but I think he's got to be careful in, you know, reining things in. You know, the sit down and shut up moments might not play so well in I, other parts of this country. I also country. think that when we're looking at our, our tenor as a state, we tend to be a little thick-skinned. We, we tend to be a bit tougher. But if Governor Christie, as a guest in a state, particularly a state like South Carolina, which has a much more genteel culture, if he were to use some of the language or if he were to um, speak in that, that kind of very insulting way to voters there, I, I think it could be candidacy ending, much like Howard Dean when he had that, that kind of moment that went viral ended his campaign. So he's got to tread cautiously. Then what about the voters who feel, who are tired of the party system, who, the, who say, see the ideological party system as having blocked anything from getting done in Congress? Um, are they going to be, are they going to benefit from this? I, I don't, at the end of the day, his rhetoric is not going to match. And as, as both the panelists have said, during these Republican debates, their, his, their opponents are going to bring out uh, Bridgegate, uh, the economy, and a lot of these issues. So I think it's going to be a, a challenge for the governor to, to uh, escape this. It's going to constantly be coming up uh, every day. It's Googleable now. We're in a new world where, we, where it wasn't 10 years ago. 
Right now, he's in New Hampshire. He's already starting with his town halls. It'll be his ninth town hall there. This is a format people in New Hampshire like, and they really like uh, him when they meet him, never mind what they read. So the face-to-face -face makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, and Governor Christie has a tremendous ability to connect with people and speak to you like uh, in a crowded room, like you're the only person in the room. It's that Bill Clinton charisma. And I think that is Governor Christie's, possibly his biggest strength going into this race. Just to take it a step further, uh, you know, we have to think of Governor Christie is elected, he becomes president, how would he deal with world leaders? Uh, how, would, how would that happen? Uh, so there's a lot of questions that are going to be asked, I think, in the next six months that the governor is going to have to see if he connects with people on it. And how is it going to affect the state when there are people jockeying for position to take his place as governor of New Jersey, should he win? Well, I think that we're already seeing lots of that right now. We see a very antagonistic Democratic legislature, you know, led in large part by Steve Sweeney, who is clearly making a play for a gubernatorial nomination. Those Democrats are not going to give Chris Christie any policy successes over the next several years because they want to regain that mantle of being opponents to him. Uh, I think, unfortunately, for New Jerseyans, what this means what this run means is that we're in a holding pattern now and a lot of our most pressing problems won't be addressed until we have a new governor. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank you, Bridget Harrison, Vin Gopal, and Jeanette Hoffman.